Hey Lou, what you doing? Oh hey, it's nothing. Uh, waiting for spring to arrive. Do you see it yet? It's cold. Well, the days are starting to get longer and they're getting warmer and I'm looking forward to getting on the road here in a few, 11 weeks. <laughs> so yeah, this episode we have some cool mods and upgrades and things to share with you and some fun adventures ahead. Mike and the boys, so stay tuned. So we recently replaced this little cover that goes to the screen that strains the water going into our water pump and there's still a little bit of antifreeze leaking out around it. We just replaced this cover even though we bought the whole replacement cartridge. So I'm thinking we should probably tear that open and replace the whole thing. So how you access the water pump is this little compartment right here. Just has two screws that holds this little panel in. And behind it, you've got the water pump and um, a bypass for antifreeze. So I need to get in here and I need to replace that part. And I can get one arm in here. I can get my head not really in here. That's it. This is the most awkward compartment <laughs> I've ever seen. So this is just not working out for me. I'm going to see if I can't bust this bottom panel out as well. That'll let me put two hands in there, or look and see what I'm doing. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I really did a number on this one. Oh geez. So, yeah, I got it out. Uh, that's going to take either some repair or some new paint or hmm, maybe even a whole new board that was put in there kind of dumb. But now you can see I can access everything quite a bit better. All right, so I've cleaned up this panel a little bit on the edges and kind of glued the areas where it had split. And it's the same size now as the uh, panel for the top. So what I'm going to do... I've got some little spacers here. I'm going to put these in the compartment on the back side so that the panel can screw just right into this, just like the top panel. All right, and there you go. A removable access panel for the water pump. Oh, this is so much better. This makes me very happy. Right now, I put the strainer cover on it, and this is a new strainer cover holder thingamadingy, and a new strainer. Um, it's still leaking. I mean, this is antifreeze that's seeping out. I think I'm just gonna while it's open, go ahead and change out the whole thing. I don't know if I need to wrap the joint with Teflon tape. That's the one question. Let me know in the comments below if using Teflon tape on this type of a junction is not recommended. I couldn't find any information. I'm figuring, you know, it is a plastic on plastic connection. It's leaky. Why not? Why not try it? All right. So hand tighten only. I hand tightened this pretty darn tight for a hand tightened thing. <laughs> anyway, I think we're good. I will wait to test it until we unwinterize, which hopefully will be here in the next couple weeks or so. But yeah, that feels pretty good. Pretty happy with the way this project came out. We are plugged in to shore power. We were just talking about how rarely last summer we plugged in at all. Most of the time we were um, without hookups, just doing dispersed camping or boondocking. So we don't usually take advantage of the plug-in functions. While we're here, we're going to. Let's go check out some of the plug-in functions for this camper. There's a handy dandy vacuum, floor vacuum. <laughs> Oh, well, 
we've got we got this ottoman which fits in this snug so it won't move around. We're not sure we're gonna store in here, I don't know. Um but anyway it doubles as a mic and I can sit here and eat. Yeah, a little bench for the dinette. Mm -hmm. Since the dinette's a little small for four, that makes it perfect. We could both fit on here. And it's a nice place when we were sitting in. Ready? Watch TV. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, not too big. A nice place to put your feet up. I like that it just disappears completely and solves that awkward space under there. So this is our first experience with a convection microwave. So we're kind of learning as we go. This is the first time we ever used it. We used it on the microwave setting. Here's our little mini blender. Ginger, garlic. So I'm gonna make this Thai ginger dressing for this salad I'm gonna make. trying out this keto and paleo not cornbread. It's actually not cornbread. No? This is not what I was expecting at all, but we'll try it. We'll, <laughs> we'll try it. We'll see how it is. Miss Jones Baking Company, keto and paleo not cornbread. It's whisper quiet! <laughs> this is a fun little blender. I don't ever use this one. It's now become the camper blender. Oh, there you go. All you have to do is close the door. Fall backwards. Okay. We are preheating. That's the easiest. Oh, yes. Cooking <laughs> <laughs> with Louise. I realized. Oh, look, it's it said it's, it's preheated. Okay. It's hot in there. Anything oh. you're supposed to take out of there? Press the number keys to set cooking time. So we're going to do 20. Yeah. Mmm, that's so bright. Bright tasting. Oh, that is so good. Mmm. <laughs> It did, actually. There's a QR code to find out the patient information. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a placenta, everybody. Placenta! We're gonna try it in our convection uh, microwave. No, we're not gonna cook it. No. Oh, look at that, it's browning. It is browning. Wow. So I was prepared to use the blowtorch to brown <laughs> the birds. Oh, did you hear that crisp? I think we could bring it up like five more degrees. I like it. Convection microwave oven. I think this is gonna be a keeper. Should we carve this guy? Yeah. Uh, All right, what you think? It came out really good. A little late to dinner, but. Yeah. I had to go do a postpartum home visit. 
Now I'm gonna eat my dinners. Mm. The Mexican oven works great. What you doing? I'm gonna do it. Do what? I'm gonna uh, de-winterize the RV. Ah. Uh, I think it's time. I think it's time. We're in. We're in New Mexico. It's really nice out. Of course, we're gonna get the April and May freezes, but since we have the heated tanks, we should be fine. I love you. <laughs> This is a messy cupboard. No, it's not. All right, so it looks like, right? No, we, it is in bypass mode. Oh yeah, there it goes. So the basic concept of dewinterizing is pretty simple. You just want to flush all of the antifreeze that's in your system out. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. The pump is working. I don't even see a leak, so that's a good sign. Okay, great. That was the cold side. Let's do the hot side. So even though we've had the RV for four months and we've actually taken it out, this is the first time we've used the water system. We were just talking, I think our old camper had a water heater, electric, and I think propane um, on the inside two switches. This one just has the one switch, which I think, I don't know if it's electric or propane, or if you use electric, you have to go turn the thing on. Better consult the user manual. Mm. So this is curious. We filled up the hot water tank and it's I guess starting to heat, although we're not exactly sure how that works. But we've got really low pressure coming out of our kitchen faucet. I mean compared to the cold, that's a lot of water. The hot is a really low flow. And it's only this faucet, the shower and the bathroom sink, they're both fine. So I'm not sure if it's a water saving mechanism or if this is something that is showing a mechanical fault. So we'll have to investigate that. So what we realize is the water heater has no internal electric switch, that the switch for the electric for the water heater is outside. And whenever that's engaged and we're plugged in, it's gonna be heating the hot water with electricity from shore power. So this switch right here, that's only for propane, and that's when you're not hooked up to electric, and that, I suppose, is off, I'm guessing. Anyway, good to know we're starting to learn our water systems. I'm so ready to try out a shower in here. I think I'm going to try that here in a little while. It's really exciting. One of the things I wanted to do this evening was to check the torque on all of my lugs. So I've got this torque wrench here. Uh, there's a lot of fancier torque wrenches than this. This one's just a mechanical torque wrench. I've seen a lot of like really nice digital ones and things, but this one should be sufficient. All right, so we're gonna set it to 100 foot-pounds of torsion. So we'll put the zero right there where the 100 comes in. This is just a mechanical torque wrench. Really simple, but very effective for making sure your torque is okay. On the tongue jack, you should have a little chart that shows you um, the number of lugs, the pattern that you want to use. So since we have six, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six on each of them. When you hear that little click, that means that it's at the right tension. Ooh, that one was a little loose. So is that one. That's why you check them after. 70 miles, right? Uh huh. Just like gas station stops, really.
look what arrived. This is the exact same bike hitch that we had on the EPRO before we sold it. So uh, this solves some of our problems with how are we going to take bikes with us this summer when we're traveling. I think this is a great solution. It puts the bikes up front, it adds a little weight to the tongue, which is unfortunate. Our intent was to put a 2 inch receiver on the back bumper and use the bike hitch that we already have to uh, haul the bikes on that. And then we saw this. That basically says, do not add any non-factory installed additions to the back bumper. All right, let's, let's put this on. <laughs> so we got it all hitched up so that we can not have weight on the tongue jack. And I guess let's just take this off. Step one, remove the power tower tongue jack. Oh, that is tight. So when we put it back together, we've got to tighten it that hard again. Okay. So after wiggling it around, we got it inside the frame. Um, and now we're going to bolt it back in. And so you can see there's access if we have to manually crank this down and we'll probably would have to pry this off with a screwdriver because it's pretty tight in there but we need to get an extension I guess so I'll have to look into that how's it coming it's good we're just tightening on the new bolts we should save these in our in our tool tub yeah, yeah just to have a few extras yeah, we got it on. It took a little bit of wiggle, wiggling. All right, so we got it up here. Um, I think we'll have to put Ben's bike on the outside. I think it works. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Now we have a new dilemma, which Mike is really not happy about, this, this stupid guy. Yeah. So that will really complicate propane changes, like to the point of, I don't like it. What about just not, not using the cover? Can you travel without the cover on? I don't know. Well, I'm glad to see that this fits in here. This is how you would raise the tongue jack if you lose power or something malfunctions with the tongue jack motor. So it's kind of a manual override, but this is long enough. We don't need an extension. This will be great. So I'm sure we'll come up with some sort of a solution for our bike rack and propane cover problem. Brr. It's a really good thing we didn't try to do our field testing expedition this weekend. It is windy and cold, sort of snowing on and off. So yeah, that would have been miserable, trying to get the trailer down the freeway in these high winds. Actually, somewhere in New Mexico was predicting 100 mile an hour wind gusts. So not where we were going, but still, <laughs> we don't want to mess with that. But don't worry, we will try it again next weekend. So stay tuned. We have a lot that we want to do next weekend. We've got um, the in-depth sort of discussion on our solar panels and our battery system, as well as things like our internet solution, which we have unthrottled and unlimited cellular internet for $20 a month. So I'll kind of discuss what we did with that and with some other cool things as well as a fun outdoor adventure. Unfortunately, next weekend, Louise can't go. She is on call. So instead, I'll be bringing my buddy Justin and it uh, should be a good time. So stay tuned. We should have this out for you next week or so.